Welcome to KL Dixon Ministries International. Knowing Christ in depth and making him known at all costs. KLDMI is a non-profit ministry organization rising and impacting Christian leaders for community transformation through leadership trainings, believers conferences, and gospel crusades. Join our faith in action today for youth development through academic scholarships and grooming with our King of Kings College. Child development, which we do in partnership with Compassion International. Community transformation through radio programming with daily Gospel of the Kingdom broadcasts. Community outreach to the abject poor and disaster response. And the ongoing construction of a 10,000 seater multi purpose ministry complex. Partner with us today by following the contacts on your screen. Dear viewers, we are greatly blessed another time uh, to come with you with a message entitled, The Lord is my shepherd. We will introduce this message from the, the Psalms 23, and it's going to be verse 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Precious Father, we love you and we thank you for your children, born of your promises. And in everything, Lord, we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Bless everybody that is listening today and is watching this program. The Lord is my shepherd. In Psalms 23, verse 1 through 6, if you go to verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This simply means that when you come to Christ and is your personal Lord and Savior, you will not lack. Something goes on beyond what actually David is talking about here. We are talking about the Lord who is our shepherd, who, who actually surpassed providing and he provided himself for us. If we go with you into the book of John chapter 10 and verse 11, we are talking about this shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And you know very well, Jesus is the bread of life. When you eat Christ, you will never die. You will live forever. Because those people that believe in him, in a verse that we're not going to read, that is John chapter 5 verse 24. They say the people that believe him have crossed from death to everlasting life, to a person of darkness, a person that lives in the spirit of darkness. For him, death is the thing that we put in the casket. That is silence, but death is much more than that. That is eternal punishment. Listen to me. When you believe Christ, you will never die. You have everlasting life, and you're given a chance to live now and forever in Jesus' name. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall never lack. There's no lack. I command the spirit of lack to go away. You're the God, my provider. You provide my food. You provide my healthy, my wealthy, and you sustain of now and the, God, the one who guides me for the future. In verse, in verse 2 and 3, this is what he says. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. Green pastures don't fight for things. Oh, well, we need to do everything we can. We need to pray. We need to pay our debtors. We need to find lunch, dinner. We need to find a mattress. We need to find a blanket. We need to find bed sheets. But do it with a spirit of peace inside yourself. Because the things that God prepares for you, he will separate them and put them aside. Just like a shepherd's man separates water from the river for his animals to drink. He leads me between the still waters. When, when there's all war everywhere, he leads me to the still waters. He sends me to a place where nobody's fighting for it. And I'll get it peacefully because he's my creator. Listen to this. God has the ability to give you and the capacity to give you green things, fresh, 
ready for you in Jesus' name. In verse 3 is what he says. He restores my soul. Now, the word restoration of, of my soul, at times men go astray. You are taken by something that is very ungodly. At times you realize that uh, I've prayed more than I should. I needed to, re- to retreat a little bit. At times, maybe you find yourself watching a wrong movie. movie. I've seen so many, especially girls that are not married. At times when they get, you know, desperate, uh, lonely, they begin to watch movies that are not educating them at all, but making them wild. But here he says, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. He brings me back in the path of righteousness for his, for his name's sake. So listen to this. When you come and you give your life to Christ, it's not you that is saving yourself. The word save means divine help. In the worldly sense, the word save means help. But when God has to save you, that means a divinely help. God will help you and drop you back into the way of righteousness for his name's sake. That's why when you confess Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have surrendered. (laughs) <laughs> you can't be scared of a captured soldier. Even if he's a general, he's a soldier, he's incarcerated, you're not afraid of him. And this incarcerated soldier is also afraid of nothing because he's already captured. <laughs> when you give your life to Christ, you're already captured. You're, fear, you're, you're fearful of nothing. Because the one who captured you has to provide security for you, has to feed you. Let me tell you something. Praise be to the name of the Lord. We are prisoners of righteousness. We belong to Christ, and Christ every time helps us to do the right thing. Even when we go astray, he brings us back. That's why I say, children of God, take your Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Never drop him. And if anything happens and you don't do well, come back and ask him to help you. I want to tell you, that's the reason of prayer. We call for help. Jesus will always help us. In verse 4, in verse 4. Actually, before we go to verse 4, in verse 3, there's something that I can give to support what I've been saying. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. <laughs> Don't faint. Even though our outward man is perishing. <laughs> Yet, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Don't, don't, don't take too much affectionate of a man that is perishing. Look, you are walking with garbage that at times will be thrown away. That is your flesh. The way you are painting it with oil. The way you are feeding it with eggs. But it's going away. <laughs> Every morning it prophesies to you where it's going when you go to the bathroom. It tells you that I'm shortly following. You know? <laughs> But I want to tell you, there is a time when you live forever and ever. And God speaks to that man that will live forever and ever. Amen. Don't trust the things of this world because they will pass away. And listen to this. Even if you don't pass away, but there's a time when you will not need them. You mean there's anybody that go to the bathroom and claim everything that is there to be his? Even if you're giving them for nothing? Listen to this. That's the time we are going to when all the greed of this world will be nullified, and Jesus, the Prince of Glory, will live forever and ever in our lives. I want you to understand something. Look at Second Corinthians 4.16, dear viewer. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our out man, outward man is perishing. Outward man is always crying teeth ache, a uh, 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 short sight. I have an, a pain in the ear. Oh, my back last night. Oh, my knee this morning. That, that guy is perishing. Yeah? Yet the inward man is being renewed day, of, day by day. That's why when a person is in that intensive care, he may not be able to move his leg. But if he's a man of God and says, Jesus is Lord, he shakes his and says, yes. Pray for me. Are you strong? He says, very strong. And I'm ready for this. But an evil man is never ready for it. Because his dreams alone shows he's going to hell. Every evening the demons visit him and say, you are about ready to come to our territory. And it's so scary. A righteous man does not fight over death. 
but an evil man fights with every dream he dreams because he thinks now he's going. We are going to a better place when we go with the Lord. Better than the world. That's why there's nobody that dies who is born again that wants to return on planet earth because he has gone to stay with the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The people that are not born again, the many time bargain. Do you know what they are beginning for? They want to come back and streamline their lives. But once you get there, it is impossible. It is what? It is very, very impossible. Verse 4 is what he says. Verse 4. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This world is a valley of the shadow of death. Eating is not easy. Dinner. Owning a property. Getting a house. Going to school. Pain. Disappointment. Living with forcey people. It's not easy. Yeah. That means yes. Though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Shadow of death may mean corruption. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Do you know what, what is the rod for? The rod disciplines you. <laughs> the staff collects you, puts you into the right way. Both discipline and collection are God's character. When you're going through a hard time, don't think God has left you. God is still with you and is going on with you. But he's making you better and to make you qualify for the kingdom of God. When Paul prayed harder, he had a problem. I think many of you know Paul's the apostle's problem. He had the thorn in his leg. He had so many physical problems. And he preached and he laid hands upon the sick and the sick were always healed. He chased demons. Paul did so many miracles than the ones that were registered. However, his problem did not go away of, half of his physical weakness. And one time he staged a prayer. He said, Lord, you must answer me today. I need your answer. Heal me. And the Lord answered him. Do you know what he told him? My grace is sufficient for you, Paul. Your grace is sufficient for me. Can't I be healed? Well, you were healed already. Because despite what you went through, what you did, even to become a gospel preacher now, Paul, you understand it's by God's grace. So you were healed. Paul, when he came out of this, the pain was still there. But he knew his grace was sufficient. Do you know what Paul says? That this was done to keep him from the pride of this world. To keep him calm because Paul knew a lot. Paul understood God more than anybody that I know and worked with him. But his background was all rotten, full of murders and conspiracies. In verse 5, you prepare, verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. What does this one mean? I want you to understand something here. The provision to the righteous is simply the presence of God. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Righteous people, wherever you are, when you don't walk with God, you suffer insufficiency. You begin to cry. You begin to ask questions, God, if you are with me, why can't you give me food to eat? David is testifying to this, but I've never seen a righteous man's child begging for food. But what, what I want to tell you when, you, when you, when you're out of God's presence, you have to work hard. You have to make bricks. When you're out of God's presence, you begin to act and think like a man. It's one plus one. But when you come to God's presence, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. And when God does such a things to you, then you begin to believe God for the impossibility. Listen to this. The provision to the righteous is simply the presence of God. If, if, if you can go with me into Joshua, into the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 through 9, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, Joshua. And I was, and as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. 
I will not leave you nor forsake you. I'm old enough to tell you that I've gone through this. People have connived, people have come together, people have promised me, but God has always kept me. In verse 6, be strong and be of good courage. Of these people, you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I showed to you, their fathers to give them. 7. And only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Children of God, read the word of God rightly and neither go to the left nor to the right. Keep right there and in everything that you do, you will prosper. You will prosper. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Speak the scriptures, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in you. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I, 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 I talk to people that belong to God. You remember those days when you took a month or even two or even three without reading the Bible. You had rioted away from God. And you can tell what happened to you. you became dry. You lost faith. Your joy went away. You started planning suicidal things. But when you read back into the scripture, you came back to the right way and we are rejuvenated. Listen to this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Speak what is written in that book. I'm speaking it right now as I'm preaching. But you shall meditate in it day and night. Think through it. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you have good success. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Listen to this. When you are with God, I want you to understand this. God being with you is an act of showing favor. And excellent hospitality. There's no lack in the presence of God. When God meets, you, when the devil meets you in your flesh, do you know what he tells you? He promises to give you food. But when you're in the presence of God, you tell the devil, "I don't live by food. I believe I live by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Father." If fa the Father says you will live, you will live. And I want to tell you, I have a God that does not need a, a kitchen to, to, to cook for you. I have a God that does not need a garden to feed you, if he chooses to feed you. I have a God that does not need a bank to give you money. <laughs> I can give you great examples. When Jesus was devoid of tax, he told Peter to go to the sea and pick the fish. And the money was there. I want to tell you when Jesus met Peter and he had fished the whole night, he had, def he had done everything possible and Jesus defied the law of fishing. During broad daylight, he said, lay down the nets and he had a heavy catch. I can give you a reference when Jesus himself was in the wilderness with 5,000 men and they told him they were hungry and he fed them all with their wives and children and the leftover was more than when they started with. That's the God I believe in. With him, all things are possible. I want you to understand and go with me into this and understand in verse 6. It speaks about grace and mercy. Psalms 26 verse, verse 6. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's a promise, children of God. Surely, I can't help it. Surely, truly, faithfully, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Whatever. Nobody can remove me from the house of God. Even if you promise me a trillion dollars, I will not leave the house of the Lord. 
I'd rather remain with the Lord than taking your corrupted trillion dollars. My God is capable of providing. I don't stop you giving me the money, but if you have to corrupt me to take the money, please stop it. Because with God, all things are possible. I want you to understand something here in verse 6. Verse 6 speaks about mercy, which is in the New Testament trans, translated as grace. Listen to this. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Do you know what is goodness? Surely, there is a, a, a gentleman that sang a song. Do you know what he's saying? He's eating well, drinking well, and sleeping well in the name of Jesus. That is goodness. <laughs> Jesus will give you a cake and you open them and will be able to hold it. There are some people that ca can eat it, but they can't hold it. <laughs> Jesus will give you a bottle of soda. You take it and you enjoy it. There are some people that have cars, but they can only sit in and they are driven. Why? Because they have no legs to drive the car. <laughs> there are some people that have the mouth to eat, but they don't have the appetite to eat. But Jesus says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to go with me in a few additional scripture. Uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, it speaks about the transfer of mercy into grace. And of, and of the fullness, and of his fullness, we have all received. And grace for grace. I saw Peter, the people say, oh, you are the God of the second chance. Give me the second chance. Now what will you do after the second chance? <laughs> Don't expire yourself at the second time. <laughs> God is all the times. <laughs> you can't tell your son and say, look, my son, this, I've given you one time, but the second time I disown you. Now disown you him early because he's about to do it again. <laughs> Say, so I am here for all your time. Listen to this. The God I have and of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. I don't know if it's not grace for grace if I would be saved. I'm not that smart. I would have maybe failed again and again and again. But by his grace, for grace, I am still going. Listen to verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. We are living grace in truth through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I want you to understand, in grace and truth, there's no limit. God can always create a room for you. In the olden days, we used, there were no buses. We were traveling on pickup trucks, on the trucks. So there was always a space for you if a truck, stop, a truck stopped. You would find a place where you can stand. <laughs> In fact, as long as you can hold yourself, there's a space for you. Listen to this. The kingdom of God is not a truck. It's better than a truck. There's always a space for you if you're able to say, I'm sorry. The grace will pick you up and the Lord will give you everlasting life. I want you to understand this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Is a point to show that in, in, in God's presence there's, there isn't any lack. With Jesus, you are satisfied. Because Jesus is the bread of life. There's nothing that he can't do. When you look at lack, it's a time or little test and trial. Wait a little bit and wait upon the Lord. You will surely be supplied too. Continually desire the presence of God. Continually desire to live in God's presence. And in Christ Jesus, I am greatly favored. In Christ Jesus, there are things that I have that I don't know why would I even have them. The opportunities happen to me that I don't know why they happen to me. Because in Christ Jesus, I am not favored. I am highly favored. I am a child of God. Born again, sanctified, purified, set apart. Not a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. I want to conclude by major conclusion in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Listen to what uh, the Corinthians are being inspired here with. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet, the inward man is being renewed day by day. I may be unconscious on the bed, <laughs> but my inward man 
is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, <laughs> is working for us as, as uh, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The pressure that we are going through, people are laughing after us. People are pointing fingers on us when we pass by. That light weight is working for us because very quickly we are meeting the glory. And verse 18. Why we do not look at the things which are seen? The people that value their success of the things that are seen are too lost. But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Well, as I'm concluding, I remember Nebuchadnezzar. Where could Nebuchadnezzar be now? <laughs> Where are the great emperors of this world? Where are the, uh, this guy from Egypt, uh, the Pharaoh? Where are the great men like Saddam, Hussein? Where are they? They were great in their times to show you that your greatness is nothing. But the time came when they passed on. When I was growing up, we had a neighbor. We had neighbors. They were very rich. And one time I thought, if I would one time had a chance to enter their house by magic, eat all their cakes, go into the refrigerator, eat, take all their sodas, <laughs> eat all their meat, and then come out. But I forgot that after eating, I wouldn't go through the door. <laughs> it would be too tiny. You know, that's how much at times we desire. So, this is where they are taking milk. They are doing, I wish one time I become this small. Enter into the house. Eat all their things. <laughs> and then turn small and go, go out. But let me tell you something. I don't know where all those friends of mine are. Many of them have passed on, and unfortunately, many of them did not give their lives to the Lord. I want to tell you, don't be so impressed by the time now, because there's a time tomorrow, and you don't know who is going to be a king, who is going to be a lord, who is going to be saved, who is going to tomorrow. Because with God in us, we are more than conquerors. With those few words, I want you to understand that you, can, you have an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Believe him with your heart. For righteousness. Confess you in your mouth for salvation. And Jesus will surely save you, change you, and give you joy in your house of prayer. We take authority against this self managing spirit. Trust in the Lord, even when you don't have nothing, God will take care of you. I bless you in the name of the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I declare you delivered. I command that tumor disappear. And I command provision to come from a way that you did not expect. Testify of the goodness of the Lord. You're blessed beyond a curse. And everybody together say, Amen. Amen.